What's up, everybody? Talking Trash Podcast. We are back. Amesy, where are you? I, I don't see you. you. Usually you're right to my left, but there you are, man. Episode 13. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's uh, it's nice to be back on here and uh, catching up with you again. And uh, yeah, episode 13, Pavel Datsuk. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, guys. I mean, we haven't had an episode for a little over a month now. Our last episode was with my dad and... Um, my dad is still talking about it. He loved it. He was like, uh, you know, he he keeps joking. Everyone was talking about all the bathroom breaks he took. So I, I'm, I'm hoping we can get like, um, you know, those prostate companies that help you with, um, <laughs> you know, going to the bathroom and stuff. If anybody out there beta prostate or anything want to sponsor the yeah. show because because my dad took two, three bathroom breaks. And uh, but no, man, it's it's so good to see you um, guys, as you know. Uh, so 13, this is kind of a, an interesting, you know, we, we become a teenager now. And this is number 13 and um, a new format. I'm here in Danbury. You're over in Fort Wayne, obviously. We have, we're have we going to talk a bunch about that, man. But um, first and foremost, I, I want to give a couple shout outs real quick. One, to Sweetwater, okay, over in Fort Wayne. Hooked us up over there with you. Um, I know they're a major sponsor with the, the Comets. And um, yeah. It's funny when I started when you first got over there, which we're gonna talk about a lot. I saw I saw all I saw on the ice was sweet water, sweet water, sweet water, and I'm thinking to myself, what the hell is sweet water? I thought it was like a, a vitamin water or something, you <laughs> yeah, know, over there. Like, yeah. And then when and then when we started like trying to figure out after you got settled and you know it's been crazy for me, so I'm like, you know, we got to get the pod back going. I'm like, damn, what are we gonna do? Um, I got to give a huge shout out, Justin Castleman. Uh, my boy, yeah. Big Shane A over there to play by play for the comments. They've been nothing but accommodating. I mean, obviously yeah. you're in the arena over there. They've been, those guys are awesome, man. I, I've been listening to Shane every game. I got flow hockey. I'm watching Fort Wayne Comet hockey, you know, every weekend. Um, I feel like I'm in Fort Wayne. I'm like, I know all the yeah. sponsors now. I'm paying attention. Um, yeah. And we're going to get to that. But yeah, so huge shout out to our squad over there in Fort Wayne, man. Sweetwater. My boy Justin and Shane really helping us yes. uh, get set up with you over there, and um, I'm I'm glad to be back, man. I, I miss you, man. I know we talked the other day with the families on the phone, and uh, definitely isn't the same without you. But it, it's so awesome to watch you out there, and um, and listen, let me do my. I always forget to do this at the start, but guys, make sure you like, subscribe, notifications, all that fun stuff. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and um, listen. Let's let's just you know everybody complains that I interrupt you a lot and uh, I'm always tall doing all the talking. <laughs> that was when we were. That was only when we were, were going off about the league. You're trying to keep it keep me out of it. <laughs> yeah, every everyone was like, AJ, you're a great storyteller, but let Amesy talk. And I'm like, I know, I gotta. I'm trying to protect Amesy, but let's yeah, you're just start to keep with me out of the mix. So so let's just start with basically. Um, your move to Fort Wayne. I mean, I remember the the night before you left. I went over. I was helping with the U-Haul and everything. It was bittersweet. But um, tell me a little bit how it's been so far for you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's. You know, we're kind of get starting to get used to moving around a little bit. And and you know, we did do it recently, going to Danbury in the first. You know, when we came to Danbury. So, yeah, we just kind of you know it was something that had to be done, and and we made the move and. You know, it was a grind the first couple of days getting out here, but um, this organization is like first class. They've really taken good care of us, me and my family, and um, they put us in a really nice spot. And um, it's been a good adjustment, and and you know we like it here, and everyone's really nice, uh, which is great. And um, it's been good. We got a nice little yard for the kids to buzz around in, and you know we're all settled in now, and and everything's good. But yeah, it's 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 always a little hard with the kids and stuff like that, and um, you know. They're always asking about Uncle AJ and making poop jokes and trying to call Uncle AJ. And <laughs> Taylor's right. Taylor's writing you letters. I don't. Know, we haven't sent any yet, but Taylor's writing you letters. So. Oh, that's um, my girl. Yeah, it's been good though. We're all we're all settled in and stuff now, and you know we got a routine in place, and the kids are going to you know the childcare and the gym and stuff like that. It's been good, so it's fun. Lots well, of mullets you, in Fort Wayne. Nice. That's Lots sick, man. Lots of mullets man. in Fort Wayne, yeah. Lots of mullets, well, man. Is is that a thing before you got there? Because we're going to talk about how you've <laughs> kind of taken that city by storm. And I don't know. I think you're going to see a lot more mullets going on over there. <laughs> and, and I got to tell you something, man. You know, uh, I kind of referenced it before. But, you know, obviously when you got there, first thing I did was uh, I asked you, like, damn, how do I stream the games? You know what I mean? And and um, you told me about flow hockey. Um 
listen, I mean, aside from Comets games, they got a million games on there. Okay, this is not this is not like yeah. a uh, a sponsor plug here. Flow Hockey's got it. I mean, um, the quality's insane. It's like watching the NHL game, basically. Um, you know, I'm used to the I'm used to those other leagues where it's just one camera angle from like a thousand feet away, and yeah. um, you know, I'm I'm watching. I'm I'm you know. So so let's kind of <laughs> let's get to what everybody was talking about and still talking about. Okay, your first game, I believe it was a Sunday. You dressed for that first game against Kalamazoo. Yeah, and you know, I'd say it from my perspective. I was like. I was so amped up like the whole day. I was anxious. I wasn't nervous. I was just anxious. It was like it was like Christmas Eve, man. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I, I was like, he's dressing. He's he's his first. We talk about we talk about it all the time, like storybook endings, but also storybook starts. I mean, we everybody at this point knows who you are, the type of guy you are. And um I was just thinking and we've always talked about, you know, those first impressions, right? So I'm thinking to myself, yeah. like, you know, and it's funny because a podcast before, you know, a few podcasts before you went out there, we talked about that kid in the World Juniors, that Canadian kid, Geeky, who right yeah. off the face off, you know, First, got kicked yeah, out for that bro. that big hit. And then you joked about, yeah, when I get back here in Danbury, my first shift, I'm leveling somebody, right? And then that caused yeah. a big uproar. And, yeah, I um, said it was going to be a clean hit too, and it still caused a <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because like I, I'm at the gym that Sunday and you know coach Dave and I were talking I'm like yeah Amesy's dressing tonight and we were like so anxious and we're like god you know and then so it's so funny you talk about like Fort Wayne is my type of city I already like I got a couple of fans there that I'm like close with already I've never even been yeah. out there okay cool. shout out to my girl I think her name is Brittany all right my girl Brittany um, and her husband, I guess, are season ticket holders, and they are diehard Comet fans. And they already, like, they went to the away games. She's sending me pictures of you in warm-ups. She's telling <laughs> me. She's telling me, like, yeah, Ames is starting. And I'm like, no way. So <laughs> then all of a sudden, uh, you know, I put on Flow TV. I connected to the big screen, and there you are. And I'm first of all, I'm just so proud, right? I'm like, oh, man, I can't believe this guy – like not even two years ago, was working full time on a tugboat, and now this guy's in the starting lineup in an East Coast Hockey League game for the Fort Wayne Comets, one of the most storied franchises. And I was just like, I don't want to sound, you know, listen, man, I'm not trying to be a 2024 guy. I wasn't getting emotional, <laughs> but I was, I was, I was happy, man. I was proud, yeah. and um, thank you. But I went from being like subdued and proud to. I think I woke up everybody in Danbury because 11 seconds in, <laughs> Diamond Hands Daniel Amesbury with one of the biggest hits of the hockey season. I don't care what league we're in. That hit on that kid from Kalamazoo, which, by the way, you know my feelings about Kalamazoo. I couldn't. <laughs> I told I you I was going to keep that rivalry alive. I told you that. I, I couldn't. Listen, I couldn't even believe it. I figured, you know. Even Amesy, you know, I know you're, you, we always talk about you got no dimmer, your balls to the wall. And I'm like, but even so, yeah, his first shift, he's probably going to get acclimated, skate around, you know. It's foolish of me to doubt you <laughs> and doubt like the type of guys we are. And when you went in there, and I believe it was our boy Shane, the play by play for Fort Wayne, with one of the greatest calls I ever heard about you tattooing this man's soul. I swear to God, I thought I was watching WWE. I thought it was like Monday Night Raw. I was like, I could not believe the hit you laid on this man. And they showed it, you know, while this guy was down. I mean, they showed it like 20 times in a replay. I'm screaming. I'm calling everybody. I'm like, did you see the hit? Did you see the hit? And, um, dude, take us through that. What was it like, you know, um, you know, I guess stepping on the ice, even for warmups in Fort Wayne, like what, what was going through your mind? You know, how did you feel? Yeah, I mean, I knew it was my first game. I was at home. Um, you know, I knew it was my first game. People are going to be watching. What am I going to do? And, you know, I've told you this before. I always try and, you know, any first impression, you got one chance at a first impression. And, and you know, 
I don't think I could. We talked about it. Like, I don't think we could have drawn it up better of, of how it went. Like, I'd, I'd take that 10 times out of 10 over a fight my first shift. I think a big clean hit is, is ideal. And that shows, like, what I can do outside of fighting and, and the energy I bring. And, yeah, it was it was exciting, you know, being out there for starting lineup and, and the anthem and just getting ready. I'm like, man, this is my first game in the ECHL. Um, you know, I played at this level in the central before it merged with the coast, but that was, you know, 10 years ago, um, full circle from when you first convinced me or, or first even brought up the idea of playing hockey again in Danbury, you know, um, if someone told me then that I would be playing in the coast at this point, I probably would have laughed and and said, yeah, okay, sure. You know, in, in my dreams basically. And uh, I didn't, I didn't think I'd end up here again. So it was, is it was a crazy, like you said, it was bittersweet coming here and, and getting here because of what I was leaving behind. But that was, you know, it was my chance at my first first impression. And, and like I said, it couldn't have gone better. I Puck got dumped deep and I was F2. F1 was kind of pushing, <laughs> flushing their guy out around the net. And uh, he did a little punch, fake punch turn to kind of fake like he was going to turn around and go the other way. And as soon as I seen him do that, I, I knew it was a fake. Like I knew he wasn't going to go the other way and he was going to keep coming my way. And I was just like, oh, man, this guy's going to wish he didn't do that because it made it a little worse for him because he kind of turned his head away. And then as soon as he came back, I was right there. And, you know, like he said, clean check. Um, He's a, he's a big, strong kid too. Like he's, I think he was, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he came back later that game at some point, but yeah, man, that was, that was, uh, it was crazy. I, I just remember skating around the crowds going nuts. I'm like, this is, this is crazy. I can't believe that this <laughs> happened like 12 seconds in. Uh, and then, uh, their red cop came out that same shift and I was like, okay, I'm, and now I'm fighting. Like I thought I was going to fight like right there. I was like, okay. And, uh, he, I was like, all right. He, I think he said, let's clear the puck first or something like that. And then the puck never cleared and my shift ended. I'm sure he was probably just a little <clears> timid, like having second thoughts. But anyways, my second shift, me and Redicop got after it and, and had a little tilt. Yeah. He and, stuck up for his boys and, and that's, you know, it's how it should be. He's the leader of his pack. So. And, and again, man, it's like, <laughs> I just, I just couldn't believe I, you know, like I said, it was just like, I felt like I was having personally an out of body experience, like watching you warm up out there. <laughs> And then you're in the starting lineup, and again, that hit, and and it, it, that hit went viral. I mean, everybody, my phone was going off like crazy because everyone in Danbury is now watching Kamataki, okay? Everybody's like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is insane. And um, I just thought to myself, oh, God, please don't kick this man out of the game. Like, the first thing that I thought about was, oh, God. <laughs> I was just like... <laughs> Oh, please, please. And then when yeah. I saw the replay, I was like, I knew immediately. But I, when I saw the replay, I'm like, man, that, that was as clean as it gets. I mean, that was yeah. arguably one of the biggest hits in all of hockey. And when you take into account who you are, who you, now you've become like this polarizing figure. OK, welcome to the club. And it's like yeah. now all of a sudden <laughs> when now it's like when you step on the ice, it's like an event out there. So then, like you said, I think it was like a shift or two later, you get after it with their captain, Red a cop. Um, and again, like good square off. And I mean, listen, you, you had your way, uh, all the credit to Red a cop. That's a tough kid, man. Big boy too. Yeah, I, I, I didn't boy. realize how big he was, but yeah. you obviously, you know, you got the better of that one, but credit to him. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. Then they're interviewing you after the first period, and, and I'm just like, the fans, I'm like, man, they, he's got these guys already. Like, it's insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was just I was just so happy. And um, you even, I feel like the second period, you even had like a bit of a breakaway. You almost, you got a good shot on goal too. And I, Yeah, I think I, I had was, a shot that game, and then I hit the post the next game, I think, too. I, but I no swear to God, I, f I feel like if you would have scored on that rush – Oh. After that hit and that you probably they probably would have had to shut that game down because the roof would have blown off literally. And I'm watching yeah. you with the puck coming down and I'm like, no way this guy like there's no way this guy scores right here. And you shot yeah. the puck and it was a good shot. And um, yeah, it was. I think it was a little, a little bit quick chest, I think, on that shot. Quick chest. Man, oh, <laughs> man. What what a first few periods for you. And um I mean, I couldn't have been prouder and like, just like, I was just in awe, man. I just couldn't believe it. And, um, yeah, against Kalamazoo, which made me personally happy. And, um, 
Yeah. I mean, tell me yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I was just saying it, it's fun here, and like the, the they get a crazy crowd. Like the fans here are so supportive. Like they have even on Sundays. Like that was a Sunday. There's I don't know how many people, but oh, thousands, seven, eight thousand maybe on a Sunday. Like that's crazy, and they're getting you know we get. 10,000 fans like almost every game it's it's really awesome the the whole city is comets like everybody's a comets fan everybody knows about the comets and um yeah i mean that was crazy that was a crazy you know debut i've I've had some pretty crazy debuts i think my first sphl game i scored two goals so i'm known to have some i'm I'm known to ruffle some feathers on my first night but uh (laughs) i'm gonna be honest i'll take the i'll take the hit in a fight over over uh, maybe not over a goal but it was it was a really nice uh, way to start my time here and the only problem with it now it's really hard to hit guys because everybody knows i'm coming (laughs) well well you know it was funny because you know you and i know man we 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 i i it, people are so, I hate to say, so dumb, right? So when you were here in Danbury still, every the knock was, oh, he's doing this in the Federal League. He can never do this, you know, anywhere else. And we all know that's a bunch of BS, right? Yeah. And then when you got to the East Coast League, I'm just like, this is great because he's going to show that he belongs. And you do belong. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you talk about that first shift, that first game. Tell me a little bit, like, the speed of the game. It just, even from afar, Obviously, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's such a difference from where you started the year. And, yeah. um, I mean, tell us a little bit. I mean, even in practice, I remember after your first practice, you called me and you were kind of telling me, like, God, man, there's a couple guys here, you know, that are just oh, yeah. unreal, man. And, I mean, we've talked about the difference between hockey from 20 years ago to now in general. But, I mean, going from the Federal Hockey League, no knock on them, but going from that league to where you are now, you know, two yeah. rungs below the NHL. I mean, even visually from afar on the couch, I'm like, man, this is a, a whole different speed. Yeah, it's it's much faster and it's just so much cleaner, way less mistakes. Everyone's in the right places. But um, yeah, like the speed of it, even when you watch it, like whether it's on, you know, I feel like watching Flow TV, like everything always looks slower when you're watching video. But like if you watch, if you compared like the federal league to this, it's just so much faster. And, and the other thing I was just saying to you, it's like, it is faster for sure, but that it actually is like, for me being a forward, a winger, getting those breakout passes on the wall, I'm less stressed. Like I'm, I feel more relaxed because I know for a fact exactly where my centerman and my other winger are going to be every single time, no matter what. So it's, it's nice that way. And it's nice, you know, like when you move up, like it de- definitely gets cleaner. Everyone's in the right places. It's not so scrambly, but, um, yeah, it's fast. And, and I mean, we got Gorniak on my team. He's got to be the fastest hockey player in the world. I swear. I swear. You've seen him skate. He is so fast. So I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's just a special, that's just obviously just a special thing, you know, like not, not everybody has that guy on their team, but man, this guy can rip, and uh, it's fun to watch. No, I mean, it, it, you're like I said, man, I mean, I'll be real. I wasn't watching Fort Wayne Comets games, like, until you got there. And then, you know, I yeah. get my Flow TV subscription. I start hitting their website, their social medias. They do a great job, by the way, with their social medias. I'm like a stickler for that. They do a, they do a hell of a job there with everything. And like yeah. you said, just first class all the way. And, um, you know, I start now, it's like I'm starting from scratch almost as a fan rooting on you guys. And I'm yeah. like watching and I always like I always like look for certain things. And, man, I, I mean, obviously a couple of guys that have stuck out to me from afar. I mean, obviously you got Cactus Jack Dugan, man. Uh, he's yeah. he, he's he got a little he's got a I call him Cactus Jack because he's got a little prickliness to him. He's got uh, a little bite. I, yeah, he does. yeah, he got a little bite. I like Cactus Jack. Yeah. Uh, he he sticks out to me. I know he got a little pissy the other day. I was watching him. I was going to say, I called him Jack the Ripper one day <laughs> when we were, uh, doing our, our uh, opening opening warm up. Yeah, he's got he's got a little bite to him. I like Cactus Jack. Um What's his name? The Linden kid, right? He's a young kid, rookie, Tur, I think. Tur, Tur Linden, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that he's um man, he scored a goal last week, and I think it was. I mean, the stick handling, bro. There's a the long sh- the shot from the outside, kind of. Is that the one you're talking I, about? Yeah, and I'm watching it in slow motion. Yeah, I mean, motion. obviously you're and obviously you're watching it from the bench or on the ice. You know, yeah. I'm watching it from afar, and I, and what's nice is I see all the camera angles. I mean, this man. He was he was walking down the defenseman. He's putting it through. I'm like, this guy is special, man. This Linden kid. Yeah. Um, I also like the Dijon kid, right? Is he Dijon, from out? Oh in, yeah, Ethan. 
Yeah, he, he's from he, I, he's from Vancouver. He's from my neck of the woods. Yeah, he's a he's a good player as well. Yeah, he's been really lighting it up lately too. The last few games for us, I think he had a hat trick. Uh, he had a hat trick yes. on Saturday. I want to say he had a hat trick. I think he had five or five, six points. I think he had. Yeah, and, and and the other kid I always seem to recognize because his last name is the same as a trash is that Dao kid. He really sticks yeah, he, out to yeah, me he, too. Um, yeah, you know, but man, yeah, it's he's like a veteran I'm, I, presence. Yeah, and it's and it's cool to watch because it's like now I'm watching. Obviously, I'm invested because of you, and you know, and uh, you know, you're just one guy on the team. So now I'm watching these guys. I got my favorites, and um, yeah. you know what I noticed, man, is that team, like you said, man, the talent level is just so insane. Yeah, um, it's deep. We're deep. We have a lot of skill, and it's just you know, for us, I find like we're starting to figure it out. We're starting to ramp up, and and I think it's the perfect time. Like you know. You know how it works. You can get hot too hot too soon. You know, we've seen it. I've seen it. Everyone's seen it where teams get too hot too soon. And I think like for us, you know, we're starting to get in our groove. We had a good couple weekends. And, and I think that, you know, it's we keep on our horse and we get hot here. That's like the perfect timing for us. And I think like like we got the team. We got the skills. We got the abilities. We got the goaltending. Um, so to see us start to put it together and really start to, you know, dominate some games here, it's really nice. Yeah, it's good to see, and I'm, I'm excited for the for the rest of the season and playoffs. Now, listen, you know, I keep it real. You know that. It doesn't matter who it is, what it is. I always keep it real. The one thing I'll say about this Fort Wayne Comet team, and again, don't take me for gospel. I've only watched a handful of games, right? I'm not like some season ticket holder for years. But I just, it's almost like the team is so good that they know that they could turn the switch at any time, yeah. right? And what yeah. I've noticed the first few games I started watching is you guys get yourself in a little bit of a hole, right? And then and it's like the third <laughs> and then the third period comes and you guys come yeah. out and it's like yeah. it's like you know you got you got ants in yeah. your pants, right? And it's like go 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 and sometimes, you know, and, and I I I tell you what, man, you guys have had some bad luck on some games cuz I, I mean there That's was one game you guys had like see- some of the bounces we don't get and some of the oh bounces my the God. other team is getting it's crazy but I was but. getting so, I was I think it was 2 weeks ago I was getting so pissed off because you guys had like 50 60 shots and you guys could have had 10 goals that game and, and like you said yeah. then they come down they skate down they get some bs goal it, it's frustrating yeah. and you know that and and you know from playing so long and I know from watching so long that that's just the way it, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes but you you hit it on the head the last few games you could see um, you guys seem to be finding some sort of different groove. And listen, all that matters is you guys make that push, you get into the playoffs, and um, you know it's what? It, that that that's all that matters. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, but it is it's interesting one, watching. One step at a time, and I think like I said, it, it is good. Like I said, not getting those bounces in a way is not not a bad thing for us because it's just making us work harder. It's making us, you know, do things the right way and and it's gonna help us in building, you know, to get to where we need to be going into playoffs. So um, you know, it is what it is, but it's 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 good. Like you know how I am. Any diver- diversity, anything anything difficult is good. If the harder it is, the better and and uh, that's just gonna mold us for for playoffs and we're getting there and our team's starting to shape up. We're we're like I said, we're we're a sick team. We got everything we need. Um and you know, it's just we just gotta come out and start hot as we do. Like if we play the if we play like we're down a goal at all times, we're there's you know, there's nobody in the league that can beat us. But we just gotta <laughs> play that way. Yeah, they, no, believe me, I, I remember it was the second trasher team, the second year we had. Look, we only had two teams, right? The the second year, it was a very similar to you guys this year where we had a lot of skill, and it just seemed like, like you said, it's almost like just put on the board at the start of the game. We're down a goal, and it's just a total different mentality. And um, yeah. but yeah, you guys are you guys are starting to catch your groove. And I've been watching every game. I've been enjoying it. I've been loving it. Um, you know, I, I've been like I said, you know, you know why I haven't been able to get out there recently, and I'm just dying yeah. to get out to the jungle, man. I I just like. That is on my bucket list for like the next month. Like, how am I gonna get out there? I don't care if I gotta drive there. I'll do it. Um, yeah, I am so. I am so. I just ordered some orange and black shoes. You know, because if I'm gonna be wearing nice. orange, I gotta. I gotta. You know how I do it. So I gotta make sure it's yeah. it's everything's coordinated right. And uh, I'm so excited, man. And uh, I can't wait to you know see you, see the family, see everybody out there uh, again. You know, our boy Shane out there to play by play. I mean, I feel like I know him personally. Um, yeah. 
He's got the voice, right? Like, I listen to him. Yeah. I don't know if you listen because you're playing. I'm not. But he's got like that. He's got the voice for a hockey broadcaster. I I, I love it, man. I'm very, I'm he very gets fired biased. up, too. I love get, it, man. You know, honestly, like, I, I mean, I know I've said it a bit. I get, it sounds like a broken record, but it's just the team's been around so long, and the they just figured it out. Like, they've they've gone through it for so long. They have it all dialed in. Like, we got ladies in the in the office staff, like, they, they've worked here longer than I've been born. You yeah. Know? And it's like, and I have nothing like travel receipts, stuff like that. You give them a travel receipt, you get it th- within 24 hours. They'll give it to you right there. It's like, I've never experienced that on any team that I've ever played on. And it's just, they got everything dialed in and, and stuff like that, man, it goes such a long way for the players. Yeah. Cause it's just no stress, no stress yep. on anybody. We can just focus on what we need to focus on. And, and that's the, that's a huge part of winning is, that stuff, like when it comes down to it and we do win a Kelly Cup, it's going to be because of those little things and, and all the staff and, and the whole organization just being well-oiled. And it's, you know, from the broadcast to the to the office staff to the, to the you know, the coaches and the players and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's really nice to be here. It's refreshing. So No, and, and, and again, you know what? That, that... I was saying, sorry, but I was saying to you the other day, I was in the office and I was just saying, I was telling them, the ladies in the office, I was saying, man, it's so refreshing. You know, they were writing me a receipt for my travel, like literally the day that I brought it them. And they were like, here, just wait here. We'll give you your check right now. And I'm, and I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. I was like telling them how good it is. And they said, you know, the only time somebody, one of the players has ever said they got treated better than they did here was when they got traded here from the trashers. And that's what she said. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know if, if uh, Nancy knew that you know, our connection or, or not yet, but it was just funny because I was like, yeah, well, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, you listen for Wayne. I mean, uh, they had the reputation even back in, you know, when we got into the United hockey league. So, you know, like we said, when you were still here, when we found out you were going there, I mean, you couldn't have, you couldn't have, I mean, you couldn't have hand chosen a better place to be. So it, it's been, it's been so awesome to watch, you know, shout out to the comments, the whole squad. I, I, I love watching these guys and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to like have a new kind of favorite team and, you know, you start getting invested in some of the guys and I, I just really can't wait to get out there. And, um, yeah, we, I have tons of, t- tons of fans asking when's AJ coming? When's AJ coming? Asking. <laughs> listen, I, I, I can, I literally, I was just talking to Kim and I was like, listen, I don't know. We got to figure it out because, um, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta see at least two, three games, whether it's yeah. two there well, and one we have away. A weekend, I think we have a weekend coming up where we got three home games. Maybe this weekend. I think this weekend we have three home games. I have to get yeah. We gotta, it's, it's trust me. It's on the top of the list. And, um, listen, Veer, you know, going into something new, I mean, uh, another topic here. I mean, we talk about first impressions, right? We talked about, yeah. I mean, for a guy like you, we, we couldn't even, we couldn't have scripted. We couldn't have, we couldn't have asked AI to make a better first impression for you, right? Yeah. But let's talk about our boy, Matt yeah. Rempe of the yeah. New York Rangers, okay? I, oh, yeah. And I got to, and, and and you got to understand how hard it is for me being the type of guy I am with the loyalty to the devils, okay? To have to shout out a ranger is very hard for me. Yeah, I knew I knew that too. I remember when I first messaged you about him, I was like, this has got to be tough for AJ cuz this is his kind of player, but definitely not his team. So, so <laughs> I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you a funny thing. So, he you know, I it's funny cuz I do a lot of these fight reviews and funny reviews on Instagram and all this and and yeah. it's funny a few months ago a guy DM me and they're like, hey, you know, Hartford's close to Danbury. You got to check out this guy, Matt Rempe. He's a, he's on the Hartford Wolf Pack, blah, blah, blah. I just never got to it. I just saw he was yeah. a big ass kid. I'm like, wow, the kid looks big, you know, whatever. Um, then, you know, you know, you know, in Danbury, how close we are to New York, right? We get all the New York stations, the newspapers, et cetera. So when it comes out that this kid, Matt Rempe, is making his debut, the outdoor game, um, at, at MetLife Stadium against uh, Islanders, right? Yeah. I'm thinking whatever. And then all I see all over Instagram is this kid, Matt Rempe, who who I call the Tower of Terror. The guy is huge. Okay? He's a big boy, he, man. He's is not he even six, a man. 6'8". Six, so, they tried to cut him down to 6'7". I'm going with 6'8". I'm going with whatever yeah. hockey DB says. Yeah, um, monster. So he comes out and I see, I mean, I'm not watching the Rangers. What do I care? <laughs> Screw the Rangers, right? So all of a sudden I get DMs, DMs, DMs. And it's this Matt Rempe kid. And I'm like, the name sounds familiar. 
But I see him and first shift goes with a veteran, okay? Let me let me get my notes here, okay? He goes Was the with the veteran. First one against Delorier or no, the first no, one No, Matt was, Martin. No. Martin, that's right. Matt yeah. Martin, okay? So he goes he goes with Matt Martin, his first game, his first shift, rivalry game, outdoor, outdoor. stadium. Unreal. And and he did a hell of a job. But because yeah. he was a Ranger, Ames, I was like, eh, whatever. He's all right. Yeah, you know, brush what, him off. whatever. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice little fight, kid. Whatever. <laughs> I remember now, sending deep, it to you, too. Deep down in my soul, I was like, man, oh, man, I love this kid, but I can't. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, well, dude, it's like West Side Story, right? I can't, yeah. like, you know, I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't get too excited over this guy. Okay. Yeah. Then the next day I go in his hockey DB. I see he's from Alberta. You know, I like those Western Canadian Western guys. Canadians. Up. Yeah. And then I'm like, man, he's young, man. I'm like, oh man, this is, man, this is that, <laughs> this is what <laughs> hockey needs. Right. But I'm like, ah, he'll probably get sent down, whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. I'm not even going to touch a base on this kid. Six days later. Okay. I actually am watching a Knicks game. And I'm flipping the channels, and I, I come across the Rangers. And it's funny because the minute I turn on the Ranger game, I see they're showing from warm-ups, uh, Rempe, you know, stretching on center ice, you know, Talking on the red Delorier. line. And here comes Nicholas Delorier, who is a Bad Boy Clubs member in his own right. And I'm like, oh, yeah. no way this kid's fighting Nicholas Delorier. Oh, yeah. I sit and watch the damn Ranger game, Okay. <laughs> And That's I'm, a rare I'm, occurrence. I am so mad. At, I, I, I'm questioning myself this whole time I'm watching. I'm like, if this is going to happen, let this happen quick because I can't sit through a Ranger game, right? <laughs> and sure enough, he fights Delorier, and I'm like, you got to like, be shitting shift. me. First shift. I, I'm like, this kid, this kid, this kid is different because let's be clear, man. You and I both know you because you do this and two because I've I've seen it. I work with fighters. at for a young kid like that to have the acorns to fight two veterans like Matt Martin and Nick Delorier, Nick Delorier might be top three toughest guy in the league. Yeah, yeah And yeah. he's holding his own, okay? Yeah. So finally I'm like, you know what? I got to at least, you know, let's get the social media going. I have to review this fight with Delorier at least. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm impressed. I'm like, all right. I'm waiting for this kid to get sent down, right? So being so close to New York, you know, everybody in New York, like our side of town, like people love these type of stories, right? So now yeah. this guy, Matt Rempe, is on the cover of the New York Post, all right? And I'm just like, yeah. man, oh man, this kid, let's see, you know, let's see if he how cracks you, under this pressure. How could you possibly send him down at this point, you know? Like, he's a marketing so Ames, wizard. So Ames, the next day, he fights Delorier on February 24th, the next day, okay, uh, Rangers are playing Winnipeg, right? I think Winnipeg, and he fights this Matthew Olivier kid, okay? Yeah. Who's another beast? He's tough, tough, tough Frenchman. First, of, first of all, okay. So I'm glad you just said that because I was just going to ask you. I was going to quiz you on something because I was doing a little research today. Matthew yeah. Olivier, where do you think this man is from? He's from Quebec, no? Dude, unless Hockey DB is is on crack cocaine, they got him coming out of Biloxi, Mississippi. No. Maybe that's where he's born, dude. Is Matthew Olivier from Biloxi, Mississippi? There's no way. That'd be crazy. Maybe, maybe his old man played for the uh, the Sea Wolves. I don't know, but I was doing my research <laughs> today before we came on, and I go on Matthew Olivier's hockey DB because he's a beast in his own right. He's a, one of these under the radar tough guys, and I'm like Biloxi, Mississippi. But look, that's besides the point. Um, he fights. Yeah, his, son, his his dad his dad played for the Sea Wolves. Played there in the you ECHL. Go. Yeah, I figured that would have been it. So he's born in Biloxi. His dad was playing in the coast, the ECHL. Okay, for, that for makes the, sense for the <laughs> for the Mississippi Sea Wolves. So then he probably went back. I'm assuming. I, I'm pretty sure I remember hearing he was um, from Quebec, but I don't know. But yeah, so he's born in Biloxi. Love that second gen. Dude, that 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 threw me for a loop, bro. I was just like, when I saw Biloxi, Mississippi, I'm like, no way. But anyway, so he fights yeah, the Olivier cool. kid. He fights the Olivier kid the day after Nicholas Delorier, all right? And I'm setting all this up because I want to get your analysis of this, all right? He fights the very next day, all right? He takes a little bit of a he, – he has a hard time with Olivier, okay? At this point, his his, his – you know, it's like 
Look, he he. So now you know the next day he's in the New York Post again. He's got the black eyes. He looks like he's playing in 1970s hockey. Okay, this kid is becoming a star on the Northeast over here, right? And then, okay, six days later, all right, it's bro. You can't tell me fighting isn't important to hockey because the week last week, starting last Monday, everyone's talking about. Saturday night, hockey night in Canada, Toronto and New York, and everybody's talking, oh, man, Reeves. Matt Rempe and Ryan Reeves? No, 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 yeah. no. I'm like, I'm like, there's no way the Rangers are going to – and we <laughs> talked about this. I thought they're I'm, not going to – I thought they are just going to scratch them for that. I was problem. like, I was like, at what point at, – listen, at what point do we – and you – listen, this is going to kind of sound weird to fans because you know we're all about the fighting, the physicality, the whole nine yards – I'm starting to worry for this kid a little. I'm like, this kid's a, this kid is like a mutant. I mean, I was like, you know I was, what? That, that you see, like, it's just you don't. You, we've all gotten unfamiliar with it for so long that you kind of think you're like, holy shit, like you're worried about yeah. him. Like, he's doing this every night. You, you know, rewind 15, 20 years ago, and that was five or six different guys in the league were doing that. I, I so you're so right because right yeah. now he's like a he, it's like he's a time traveler right yeah, it's almost totally. like he's a time traveler and I'm like this yeah. guy is from like the 1970s Broad Street Bullies or something like yeah. there's no way this guy is real and you're I'm right so We've happy of, this kid exists <laughs> and, I, and I'm so happy and we're gonna get to why I agree with you and I and I, as a Devil fan I'm gonna tell you why I'm happy too so anyway so he fights. So, so I'm thinking the whole week, right? I'm like, man, there's no way this fight's going to happen. Like, I just, I didn't think it was going to happen. Okay. Yeah. I honestly now, didn't either. So, so let's just, let's just say one thing, right? Aside from the fighting, okay? Um, when he played Philly, he scored the game winning goal, by the way. He's got yeah. two points in eight games. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he, he's contributing and he's throwing the body. Okay. He's throwing some diamond hand checks out there. Okay. He, he took someone. He see. He seems like he can skate. Like, he's pretty quick for a big guy. No, this man, okay, like I said, the Tower of Terror, this man is skating, and he laid a hit on someone on Toronto the other night, clean hit. In the corner. And, and I'm like, man, this guy, it, it, it's like, he, he's kind of like a cyborg, bro. He's different. And, yeah, when um, he hit that guy, he was buzzing, dude. He was flying. <laughs> and, then, and, and, then it, and then it's funny, right? Because then they, of course, all right, you see at one point Ryan Reeves challenges him and it doesn't happen. And all of a yep. sudden you got you gotta hate social media, right? You got oh, all these I can't stand these nerds on the these, behind the keyboard. Dude, you you cannot make some of this stuff up with these morons, okay? So They're sitting like, in their underwear in their mom's basement telling dude. telling us this guy's a pussy because he didn't yeah. answer the bell to Reeves after fighting five times. <laughs> So, so I'm thinking to myself, these guys just don't understand how it works between, no. hey, it's the end of this guy's shift. Reeves was kind of fresh. He And listen, credit to Ryan Reeves. He wasn't trying to show him up. He challenged him. It didn't happen. But almost yeah. instantaneously on social media, you got these morons being like, oh, he turned down Reeves. He's a girl, blah, blah, blah. And then it's sure enough, a it, joke. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it is so embarrassing. To, it, yeah. But then it happens, right? Center yeah. Rice, Hockey Night in Canada, Ranger, yes. original six teams, and dude, I did a breakdown. Go on at DB Trashers. I broke this fight down. Oh my God, dude. Um, what a great fight. It wasn't like the most exciting fight in the world, but it was a great fight for so many reasons because I think you see it too, bro. These veterans respect this kid, Rempe, and they're giving yeah, like so people don't should. people don't realize that like a lot of people who don't understand think like these veterans are trying to like put this kid in his place. No, they're trying to pass no. the baton to this kid because yeah. this this kid equals job security. All right, that's and I've you know me. I've said this a million times. I always say this is you know these these we all keep each other employed. So a guy like this and, coming up is gonna get the next tough guy another contract for next year. You know. And listen, my New Jersey Devils, okay, went out and traded for um, Curtis McDermott, right? Uh, a yeah. tough kid, not the toughest guy in the world, but he's a heavy for this day and age. And I'm ecstatic because yeah. now the Devils have a heavy. And yeah, um, they it's have be to, and though, in that division. There's no way we we get you know. There's no way we get McDermott without you know the Rangers getting Rempy. So, yeah. I mean, I kind of just ran down. I mean, listen, this kid. It, it sounds like he's had a full season already. He has eight games, four fights against some of the top guys in the league. 
two points. Um, he's taken New York and our side of Connecticut by storm. Everybody's Matt Rempe, Matt Rempe. He's taken the whole hockey world by storm. Let's be honest. It's not just that area because it's it's all you see on the internet right now, whether people are hating on him or, or loving him. I think there's more people loving him than hating him. But the fact is people are talking about it, and it's – for a lot of people, I think it's getting a lot of people uh, excited about the game again. You know, I feel like there's a lot of people probably that don't watch as much hockey, and I guarantee they're tuning into the New York Rangers right now. Now, I want to get into some analysis on this kid from you. What? Who yeah. better than you? But I, I guess, like, how can you, as an executive in the National Hockey League, see this and say... And I know what people are going to say. Fighting is part of the game. But we all know yeah. they're trying to get rid of fighting, right? We all know yeah. this. We all know. But you're watching this, right? How can you say, damn, can't we just expand the rosters by one guy and just have a yeah. guy like this, like the old days? Why can't yeah. you have all the things that make hockey so great right now between the skill level? Like we said, you know, looking like a guy like Ter Linden on your team. The skill level yeah. in hockey right now is insane. But you're telling me that you there's not a place for, for guys like this? Like like a Matt Rempe? Like Oh I, I, there's no I, question. I don't understand I, and it's it's crazy like how the, like I, I'm hoping the NHL is taking notice because I've learned in life things go in circles. Hopefully they say, Hey, you know what? Maybe we loosen the reins a little. Who knows? I think what's actually happening is like so like we kinda got away from it. Like obviously there's still guys around the league and stuff, but then Everybody kind of every team kind of gets a little bit soft at every level, and then all of a sudden somebody gets a tough guy, and he starts kind of pushing guys around. And then now we're in the stage now where people are starting to be reminded that it is kind of a cheat code, and and you know it's so now it's kind of the pendulum is swinging. I've been saying this since I came out of retirement and I played last year and all this year. I was like, man, the tough guy pendulum is swinging back, like it's coming back. And uh, guys like Rempe are doing nothing but ser they're serving the rest of us. We're, you know, we're all at the end of the day, we're all serving each other. But like, this is the greatest thing for us. This is great for the game, gets everybody excited. I think the NHL is going to see their ratings spike with the Rangers broadcast and, the, and they'll maybe get their head out of their ass. I don't know. I, I can't really say anything bad about the NHL because it's, it's a great, you know, it's, it's everything yeah. they do is so cool. But, but at the end of the day, it's like, I feel like a lot of people kind of got bored with the game. It just didn't have the same bite that it used to because it's, at the end of the day, with these tough guys buzzing around the ice, it does put a little edge under everybody, and it kind of puts a flame under even the skilled guys' asses, and everybody seems to play a little bit harder. You know, everybody kind of knows, oh, I'm swimming with the Sharks. Listen, we had guys on the Trashers have career years in terms of stats because they had those security blankets, right? And let's yeah. not say, and let me tell you something. Again, I feel like I'm going to get struck by lightning because it's the Rangers, but they're one of the hottest teams in hockey right now, and I don't think there's any coincidence. This kid comes up. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're not skilled with or without him, but there's no, like, there's, there's no, there's no way that a guy like that, a guy like you doesn't change things. And, um, I mean, even for yourself, I mean, you know better than I do. I'm not there, but I'm assuming when you came into the mix with Fort Wayne, I mean, I got to I gotta feel like some of those guys feel a little better. That's just me. I mean, I don't want to speak yeah. for anybody, but. Even in games that I don't really play much, it obviously it's like I want to play more, obviously, but we'll get there. It's just, you know, a matter of time. Just it's the It's crunch time this time of year, so it is what it is, but like. Even the games that I'm not playing much, like after the games, a lot of the boys will come up to me and just be like, hey, man, like last time we played those guys without you, these guys were all running around big dog in and, and everybody's just got the tail between their legs now. And, you know, all of our guys, I feel like can play a little bit more relaxed. And at the end of the day, everybody knows that's what it is. That's why teams yeah. need toughness. And that's why, you know, that's why I got a job. And that's why, you know, guys like me have jobs. But um I love seeing this Rempe kid. I think he's – for him to be able to hang with these guys with the little experience he has, and that's not a knock on him at all. Um, it's just he grew up in a different era than a lot of these other guys grew up where these junior leagues, you can only have your 10 fights and guys just aren't fighting as much. Like when I was in junior, I would have 30, 40 fights a season. Uh, a lot of these guys are you know, getting to the pro level and they've only had 30 or 40 fights in their life if that so to go against the top nhl guys guys like reeves got reeves i don't know how many fights he has but it's probably over 100 out well at least over 100 and uh 
you know, it's, it's, it's just gotta be, it's, it's, it's hats off to him, man. There's, there's some small things. Like I told you, I, I messaged him. I've been talking to him a little bit too. Yeah. I want to help. I, there's some little things that he does that it's like, okay, if he made small adjustments to his game, he would just, he's going to, he's regardless, he's going to be the guy at some point. He is going to be the guy. He's a monster. He's green right now. He's fairly like new at it, but he's still doing really well against these guys so a couple small adjustments I, I i'm you know the one thing i i notice and the one thing is i say to everybody is you want to spin away from power you notice he's kind of drifting backwards so he's drifting into the right hand i think if he can stop and start drifting the other way and, and rotate away from power that'll help him use his reach on defense a lot better and he'll be a lot harder to hit um because if i was fighting him i would i would spin him into my power you know, so being a long guy like that, he should be spinning away from power and, and, you know, just learning how to lock out. And, and I think he, he improved against Reeves, like, uh, the mistakes he made it against Olivier. I think he cleaned them up against Reeves with locking his arm out, uh, and kind of getting, yeah. a, getting a good grab and stuff. And he did well. And, um, yeah, man, I love to see it. Uh, I, I love, uh, I love it, man. Like there's, very few guys coming up that age that are that are doing that and he's i think he's got himself a, a full-time job here and i don't think i'd be surprised if he got sent down at this point he's no he's, he can obviously no. he can obviously play hockey everybody's talking about him the city loves him the game loves him um there's nothing better for the game of hockey right now as far as i'm concerned yeah and, and again you know from from i remember scouting guys you trash your days. Brad Wingfield used to teach me stuff like you taught me about fighting on the ice. But yeah. also now being in boxing for 13 years, learning a lot through boxing. And obviously it's different type of fighting. But you can see when a guy has something. And like you yeah. said, he has he has right now four fights, right? And each yeah. fight he's gotten tactical. Like a little more yeah. tactical each fight. Fastest way to learning is getting punched in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's no faster way to learn how to fight than getting punched. Everyone and knows that. And I think I, I definitely think that Olivier fight kind of said, "Oh man, I can't be as wide open, right?" Yeah, and, I woke um, him up a little bit, I think. And and Olivier did a good job. Like he's obviously smarter. He's technical. He pretty much did what I would have wanted to do against Rempe. Whether I could get inside like that, I think it was. I think Rempe. I think next time Rempe fights Olivier, I don't think it's going to go the same way for Olivier because I think Rempe learned what he needed to learn. And like I said, man. We all seen what Bugard did in this league, being a big, oh, yeah. strong guy. Rempe's 21, man. He's what, 240? <laughs> He's 240. He's going to be 260, 265. He's going to be guaranteed. He's going to be 260. What is he, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, whatever he is, and he's going to know how to fight. He's going to be technically sound. Wait till next season. He's going to spend the summer boxing and training, getting stronger, getting bigger, growing, because he's still only 21. And he is going to come in next year. He's already doing it, but next year, he's, I guarantee he's going to be on another level next year. And all these guys can enjoy getting their shots in now because I don't think they're going to be getting them in next year if they're still around. I'll tell, I'll t I'll tell you what, and, and we all know, right? It's funny because if you're not in the fight game or if you're not around fighters, whether it's hockey, boxing, combat sports, it's so funny when I talk to people and they say, man, why would someone even try to fight this kid? When you're a yeah. fighter, you want to <laughs> you test yourself. To. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and I tell people, like, if for people who don't understand, it's like, well, why would anyone try? And I get it. Why would a normal person want to try to fight a guy 6'8", 240, 21 years old, got a lot to prove? Because yeah. guess what? In five years, there's going to be another Matt Rempe, hopefully, who's looking to yes. prove himself. Hopefully and, um, sooner than that. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but I, I'm telling you, this kid is an absolute freak. And, and, besides, and besides the physical... But besides his physical stats, his his presence, the intangibles, right? For him to fight his first shift, first game against a a, a big time veteran outdoor game, yeah. millions of people watching. Again, Respect. not not everybody's built like that, and it just reminded me so much of you. And I'm like, <laughs> there's not a lot of guys that that can handle that pressure, you know? Um, yeah, man. Especially he's done really spec good. Yeah, I'm so – I mean, I don't even know the man. I'm proud of him. I reached out to him yes. through the Trasher account, congratulated him. Yeah. He always got back to me. I know you two have connected. Uh, yeah. He would be a hell of he would be a hell of a guest. We got to figure out yeah. how to get him here. It's too, it's too bad if I was still in Danbury, it would be really easy to to get on the ice and, and oh yeah, up with them or even have him at the 
have him over at Champs, get him working with Dave and stuff. But yeah, but I mean, have you seen his fight with Vincent Arsenault in the A? Uh, he played. No, Vinny I didn't see for, that one. So Vinny, Vinny played on my team uh, back in 2014 when I played for Denver uh, Cutthroats in the Central League. So Arsenault played on my team. He was up and down in the A at the time, and um, him and Arsenault had a crazy fight. And uh, funny story about me and Arsenault is my first practice when I got to the Central League, I think we played a couple games that weekend. I hadn't even practiced yet with these guys. And all the boys go out on Sunday. We had a fun Sunday. You know, we all go out. And then Monday morning we had practice. They're just like, hey, well, let's just skate out all the beers. And, and you know, it's standard Monday morning practice. Just, you know, not nothing too crazy. Let's just make sure we get a good sweat. So we're all out there. And I line up to take opening face off. And Vincey Arsenault, he's a, he's a Frenchman. He, he, he the guys from Quebec play with a certain type of edge. They'll they'll stick you in the nuts. They'll they'll fight you. <laughs> they they play a certain way. We all know. And uh, so me and Vinny line up to take the opening face off in practice. We're playing two puck. Puck drops. Vinny cross checks me in the face right off the hop. And I'm thinking like, <laughs> this is Monday. We're here. It's gonna be a fun day. We're just gonna buzz around. I get cross checked in the mouth right off the bat. This is my first practice. He just came down from the AHL. So I'm thinking like. What do I, can, I can't really beat this guy. You know what I mean? I'm thinking like, oh, I can't really do anything here. So so then we go in front of the net. You know, I get a shot on net. Vinny, there he is again. Stick gives me a stick. I give him a little punch. And I'm skating away, and he just two hands me in the back of the – you know when you get slashed with like the flat part of the stick on the back yeah, of the leg? Yeah, yeah. And it was just a stinger. It stung so bad. It was like a beaver tail right in the back of my, my leg. Aww. And I turned around, and we both just shed our mitts right away. This is my first practice in the Central League. <laughs> me and Vinny go toe-to-toe, and it looked a lot like the fight with him and Rempe. Just toe-to-toe. Vinny will go left, I go right. And we just beat the crap out of each other. And uh, I'm sh- 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 shitting, shitting myself right now because I'm thinking I'm going to get cut, dude. I just fought this guy <laughs> that just came down from the AHL. My first practice. Coach is going to be pissed. Coach blows his whistle. Derek Armstrong, shout out, beauty. Yeah. Sh- blows his whistle. Shuts out. Oh, everybody bring it in. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm I'm getting gassed right on the spot here. I think I'm in trouble. Like. He goes, you guys see that shit? That's NHL shit right there. I want that intensity <laughs> at every practice. He goes, fucking right, Ames. Fucking right, Vinny. Let's go. That's good. And I was like, all right, so we're good. And uh, me and Vinny have been in touch ever since. And to this day, we, uh, we, you know, he messaged me the other day. We were talking about this. He asked me if I seen his fight, and it was a crazy toe to toe fight. So there's my Vincent Arsenal story. He's oh, still that's going. Great. I think he's a little bit younger than me, man. But he's been grinding out this whole time. He's in the A. And uh, tough kid too, man. I'm, I'm a good player. Well, listen, so I again, you know, re- Rempy Mania. I guess it's 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 going and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch. And um, but listen, speaking of fun to watch, okay. A few weeks ago, and I know we've been off a few weeks, but a few weeks ago, all right, I get, and I'm sure you do too. I get DMs all day long. People want me to review this fight or this crazy moment or this and that. And someone sent me what I think might be the funniest damn thing I saw in a hockey game ever, okay? My boy, okay, I think I'm going to pronounce his last name wrong, but Will Mazinski, Mazinski, listen, St. Andrews College, I believe that's in Ontario, right? This kid, okay, beautiful goal, by the way. He's coming down the line. He, 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 he roofs the puck, okay? Goalie's bottle goes flying, okay? Oh, yeah. He scores. His momentum goes behind the net. This man, Big Will, picks up the goalie's water bottle, literally drinks it, and tosses it. Unreal. <laughs> he he skates. <laughs> he he hits. He he you know he he daps all his guys up on the bench and goes right to the penalty oh, yeah. box for an unsportsman. Dude, I I gotta I'm gonna have Shane. I mean, put that, is that put, even a penalty? I don't know. Like, what did he really do wrong? It's kind of gutty. Maybe somebody should fight him, but I don't know if it's a penalty. I laughed so hard, so hard when I saw this. Oh, Shout yeah. out to my boy, Will Mazinski, St. Andrews Love College. It. That was one of the funniest things. I actually DM'd him. He DM'd me back. Yeah. And he, That's got to be such the greatest a, celebration I've seen. Oh, but, and I got to, I got to, I'm going to put it on the, I got to put it on this episode. And um, if not, go to at DB Trash. It was so funny, dude. And it takes me to, right? We always talk about these unwritten rules, right? The unwritten rules of hockey. And listen, to man, it's the code. It's kind of gotten out of hand at some at a certain point. It's gotten a little out of hand. I agree. Here's here's my take on it. Right, 
When it comes to the fighting, the enforcers, any sort of combat, I believe the code has to be respected at, at all times. I mean, there's no, yeah. like, fighting is life and death. But, man, I can't help it because I, I, I'm i an old school guy, man. You know I'm old school. I'm, I'm going to be 38 years old in a few months. I'm a very old-fashioned yeah. guy, but I cannot help laughing at some of the stuff I see. And I know that yeah. I'm, quote, not supposed to laugh. I'm not no, supposed man. to like it. Dude. So this board. brings me this brings me to my next thing. Not only Will Mazinski is an absolute legend for that celebration, okay? A few weeks back, all right, we got the Ottawa Senators, Toronto Maple Leafs, the ba yeah. Battle of Ontario, all right? Ottawa, all right, the kid Ridley Gregg, 21-year-old, oh. I think, all right? Yeah. He's got a, you know, uh, Toronto pulls their goalie and uh, <laughs> Ottawa, you know, actually Ridley Gregg makes a hell of a, a defensive play, um, Ends up stopping Toronto's momentum. He's got a breakaway. Now, for anyone who doesn't know hockey or watch hockey, you're supposed to, first of all, when you score, you're supposed to have no emotion. But when you have it's an empty, empty net. Netter, yeah. At the end of the game, empty netter. At the end cool. of the game, you're supposed to just, like like Happy Gilmore, just tap it in, right? Just tap it in. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no problem. My yeah, man you're not supposed really... to, like, sell past his bench or, like, do anything <laughs> crazy. It's kind of like a... Listen. The, the empty nuts enough, you know. Listen, Ridley Gregg. I'm sorry. I, I I know I'm I'm not I'm supposed to be an old school guy. I I know I'd be livid if I was Toronto, but I can't help it. This guy, Ridley Gregg, takes a clapper right oh, at yeah. the empty net from the top net. of the crease too. It was like and right it, on top. <laughs> And it was in Ottawa, so of course the goal horn, and now yeah. Morgan Riley, star star player for Toronto, comes over, cross checks, and then we have a melee. But this See, that's is why the right I love way that to stuff. That's the right way to handle it. Like at the end of the day, do I understand where people are coming from saying he shouldn't have done it? Yeah, I get that, but go for it, do it. Just know that there's some repercussions coming and that's just going to be how it is like i would have liked it better if he did that and then when he seen morgan riley coming just shed his mitts and was like all right <laughs> you know what i deserve it let's go you know that would have been a little bit more respectful i don't care though i i actually I'm, I'm with you on this one i don't mind it but you better be ready to answer the bell after uh i don't i, I kind of was disappointed morgan right well you got suspended i think for the cross uh, I, know. After. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think he should have got suspended because it's like, hey, man, you got to know that something's coming if you do that. And I mean, the NHL likes to kind of get in on those and, and try and stop them. But nah. at the end of the day, you can't stop somebody like in my opinion, you shouldn't prevent people from getting pissed about like Morgan Riley, I think, did exactly what I would have expected. I would want to see from any of my teammates. Um, if I was on the ice, my gloves would have been off the second I see him wind up for that slap shot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I actually, I'm not going to lie. The other day when Dugan was coming down on a breakaway on the empty netter, I, there was something inside of me that's like, Dug's going to rip a clapper here. But, uh, but, he, but he didn't. I'm going to, listen, maybe we should save this for off the air, but you can let the locker room know. Any comment that pulls a Ridley Gregg, I got Money a trash or hoodie for you. I, I got you. Board. I no, no, no money, no money. <laughs> oh yeah, no we're not money. allowed to do that. Yeah. No money. <laughs> I will give a jersey or or, or whatever. But I, I mean, uh, listen, the Ridley Gregg effect. So now, ever since Ridley Gregg did that, okay, which didn't again, a girl, I, didn't a girl do it? Yes, the PWHL? yes. So so then I or think was it college I don't know, or something. I, it might have been college, but all of a sudden yeah. now it's the now now here's the thing, right? Oh, I man. get it. I get it. You're not supposed to like it. You're not supposed to do that. But now. <laughs> If you want to attract casual fans, okay, yeah. first of all, I didn't know Ridley Gregg from a hole in a wall until this incident, right? Yeah. All of a sudden now, I'm interested when Ottawa plays Toronto again. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so now, I think it was college. You had uh, now all of a sudden these Ridley Gregg effects, okay? Yeah. People are just taking slap shots, and I love oh, yeah. it, man. I'm all here for it. <laughs> I like it, because. Too. I love it, man. I, I can't help it. And, and again, I'm going to be true to myself. I, I know I'm not supposed to like it, but I no, love man. it. And again, and again, you know what's great? Everybody in Toronto was complaining all year about Morgan Riley doesn't show any emotion. He doesn't even look like he wants to be out there, right? Yeah. Well. And then he bitch. And then now they're all bitching about it. Yeah. It, no, it makes no that. sense. Now, yeah, speaking but you of know what? <laughs> Things like that, though, are so great because it literally – it's the emotion in the game that, we, that we've been missing. I think it's like when you watch a hockey game a lot of times, obviously playoffs is different, but a lot of times during the season it's like, man, like these guys just look so comfortable when they're sitting on the bench waiting to go out. Like 
they're just like chilling and i'm like man remember when like these guys were just everybody was like on edge because it's like when i go out there i might get my head taken off someone might beat me <laughs> up like i don't know what's gonna happen but everybody was kind of ready so i love seeing anything that brings that kind of extra energy to the game like obviously you know that's not like the classy way to play hockey but <laughs> dude forget it man just do it and honestly I was thinking about like the code. We always talk about the code with fighting. I get it. Like, I, you know, obviously you're not going to hit a guy when he's down. There's certain things you don't do and, and stuff like that. And I'm on board with that. But I also think that the code that we all talk about does get kind of, kind of, it kind of veered off into this thing that's way bigger than it was originally. You know yeah. what I mean? Like everybody's like, oh, that's against the code. You can't do that. It's like, well, actually, no, that's, you can <laughs> do that. You just better be willing the code yeah. is you do that, but you answer the fucking bell when after you do it, because because someone's coming for you, you know. And and I'm okay with it, man. I like, dude. It. I listen. I wish I still played hockey because my goal would be get on the ice for. Listen, if you get on the ice, all right, for an empty netter, bro. Yeah. Listen, if you Ridley Greg it, I I. I ain't gonna have to electroshock me back to life because I'll lose it. I'll fall uh, off the couch. Plus, I'd love sure, to hear. It. <laughs> I'm not sure this season I'll be getting on the ice uh, in a one goal game at the end of the game, but maybe next season we just gotta work. Hey, on it. Hey, listen, listen. You always tell me, speak it to existence, right? You're yeah, gonna, yeah. you're gonna do, you're gonna pull a Ridley Greg, and I can't yeah. wait to see. I can't wait to hear Shane's call on that because I'm gonna, oh, yeah. I'm gonna. They're gonna have to call paramedics for me because I will lose it laughing. <laughs> And, um, hey, you I'm, never I'm, know. I might th there might be a situation that has me coming out of the penalty box for a breakaway on an empty netter. Oh, uh, so. well, listen. Talking about things you don't see very often, and I highly doubt we'll see this in the NHL, the AHL, or the East Coast League. But friend of the show, friend of Joe you, friend of Pace. me, Big JP Joe Pace. Okay. Oh my God. Bo Joe, Bo Joe, shout out Joe Pace, uh, a legendary minor leaguer man, and, and again, I, I've always appreciated Joe. He's a fellow wrestling fan, such as myself. We've always, uh, we've always kind of bonded. I know he loves you. We're, we we kind of have a big mutual respect, all three of us. But last weekend, I'm getting DM after DM. Did you see Joe Pace? Did you Unreal. see? Joe? I'm like, I like God. What did Joe Pace do? Joe Pace, okay. Uh, so let me start by saying I saw the incident. Instead of explaining it and then re-explaining it, I, I I reached out to Joe after I saw the clip. I said, Joe, what the hell was that? And he <laughs> said, dude, uh, by the way, Joe Pace, uh, Federal Hockey League, Mississippi Sea Wolves, another good organization down there. And um, I guess they were in back. Yeah. So I guess I guess he they was, were in he was playing for Carolina. Was he? That game. Yeah. You didn't know what happened? Okay. So. So no, I know. I, he told me. He, he told me he what was happened. He playing for Carolina I, that game. It was. <laughs> it was so. So what happened was the just some federal league shit. We'll go over it. So Carolina bus broke down, and they didn't want to spend the money to fly everybody or they <laughs> whatever. Something happened, and they're like, "Oh, we don't have the money." So they only flew six guys because that's all they could afford to to Baton Rouge for the game. And then Joe Pace and a couple other guys, I think, that played for the Sea Wolves. Went and played for Carolina that game. So it was Dude. like a homemade team. And they didn't even have the Carolina jerseys. They were wearing like the Biloxi, some other Mississippi jerseys. It was the most Federal League thing i ever seen. And then what is the guy, Joe Pace, I think a TV timeout or in between periods, Joe Pace no, is so, so, so So he told me that. He told me. So so you just brought a whole new wrinkle into this. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. I just thought I thought Mississippi was playing Baton Rouge. No. So I guess. So he, Carolina's playing. Carolina. All right. All right, so let me restart this. Thank you, Mr. Diamond Hand. So, so we have Carolina versus Baton Rouge, and Joe Pace, who plays for the Sea Wolves, is now on Carolina because oh, yeah. the Carolina team can't make it. All right, well, so it's the same owner, that, so they basically play for the same team. So, so yeah, well, that's a whole nother thing. But well, yeah. well, um, I, so that makes it that much funnier. So Joe Pace, this makes a lot more sense now. So yeah. what happened? What he told me was, I guess there was a goal scored by Baton Rouge, and they called it off, and the fans were pissed. They started throwing um, shot glasses and shooters into the, onto the ice, and um, yeah. you know they're cleaning it up. And of course, the 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 arena announcer makes the fatal mistake of saying, "Stop throwing things on the ice." Well, you yeah. and I both know if you tell someone, "Don't throw it on the ice," they're yeah. throwing more shit on the ice. So, right. so now I'm asking Joe. So Joe's like, "Yeah." So I just I was thirsty. I wanted a drink. I was getting. I was trying to get someone to throw me something, and a couple people refused. And again, if you go on the Trashers Instagram, I reviewed this the other day at DB Trashers. All time. All time, man. He skates to 
almost center ice, and he and he like he has like telekinesis with this fan <laughs> who's wearing a blue jersey. The yeah. guy in blue, all right. You talk about like the, you know the NFL combines going on. This guy should go for a quarterback position. A oh, yeah, beautiful toss. I, he throws a Budweiser to Joe Pace on the ice, and Joe yeah, Pace takes be. a drink of it. Okay, <laughs> and and I mean it looked like a prime Stone Cold Steve Austin in nineteen ninety eight. Like the throw was good, the catch was good, and then beautiful the throw back. He threw uh, it back well, to him. He he takes a drink of it and then like tosses it kind of a backhand toss. It was beautiful yeah. form. And then yeah. of course my our guy in blue, the fan, takes the it and he's stone cold Steve Austin's it. it. The the execution, it was yeah. almost like they planned it. It was like it was unbelievable. It and was, then it was amazing. And then my favorite part of the whole thing was then obviously the refs come and get him and like, all right, you're out of the game. So this yeah. guy, Joe Pace, puts his arms behind his back, leans over like he's being taken to the paddy wagon, and they oh, escort yeah. him off the ice. It was one of the funnier Drinking things. In public. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm shocked he didn't get arrested. I mean, the Federal well, Hockey League, I mean, uh, is there so a warrant? Going, <laughs> going back on the, you know, this Federal League, this is such a Federal League story. It's hilarious. But uh, just how it all panned out, how he was playing for Carolina, like that was funny too. But there was a guy, Mafoose. He was in the Fed for a long time. He was in the Fed when I first entered the league before I ever played in any other pro leagues. And uh, Mafoose, what happened? He squared up with a guy one time, one of his buddies, uh, to fight. And then instead of fighting, he shotgunned a beer or something. The video is online. <laughs> like he literally squared up with a guy to fight. And then he just stopped and shotgunned a beer at center ice. And he got banned indefinitely. He paved the way for me, actually. But uh, I think he, he, he got banned indefinitely for chugging a beer on the ice. So uh, I wonder if Joe Pace is going to get an indefinite ban. I'm going to have to likely say he doesn't because he runs the organization. I hope he does it because that was one <laughs> of the funniest things. I hope he does things. it too. Yeah, that was great. And like, man, at the end of the day, like Joe Pace is such a beauty, man. Like I got some crazy stories. I told the 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 flaming bus story. That was Joe Pace written all over it. Um, great minor <laughs> league guy. He's been a he's been a player coach for the last fifteen years of his life. It's 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 hilarious. I love seeing it, man. And he's doing a great job with that team in Mississippi. We we were talking, me and Joe, and we're gonna get him on the pod, obviously, maybe during the off season. But uh, what a great guy. Like I said, um, we'll we'll try to get that on the pod too. That the footage was unbelievable. It was it was funny, man. But uh, speaking of funny, um, well, funny and serious. So we dropped a new Diamond Hands Daniel Amesbury merch with 500 level, yes. and yeah. um, the the shirt is sick. I actually got my hoodie coming any day now. But uh, we actually, and one of the things I love about Fort Wayne is you guys got. I think there's more than one, but. The photography they these guys have are unreal. Like they got yes, great photographers, yeah. and um, someone had a picture. I think, God, I want to think it was when you guys were playing Toledo, and there's a picture. Someone, you know, one. I want to give credit to the photographer. I'll put it on the screen. But there's a great picture of you. It looks like before a face off. It looks like you're chirping someone or talking to somebody. And yeah, he went after he went after one of our guys. Uh, the sh that like literally that same shift there was an icing on the play so he got stuck out but he went after Dugan I think and he was kind of mixing it up with Dugan so then GS our coach puts me out he goes Amesbury go line up beside him let him know or I don't even he didn't even say that he just put me out he knew I knew what to do and then I lined up yeah. beside him and I was and I was giving him the the hairy eyeball there and the picture was just perfect the picture is perfect so so we decided to put a social and and, and in honor of your new merch dropping, which will drop a link, make sure you guys get the new Diamond Hands Daniel Amesbury merch hoodie, sweatshirts, T-shirts, kid stuff. I bought Dominic a onesie. It's gonna be fire. Nice. Um, yeah. I we did a we did a caption contest, right? And, and I said yeah. we I got four or five captions, and I said caption this. You know what was Ames saying? And I got a couple. I want you to choose the winner. Okay. okay. I got I at Bob Melvin wrote. And, and again, we're going to put the picture on the screen so people could understand. It says, want to go, you greasy pigeon? I'll make you groom my stash. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> nice. All right. Like pigeon. Pigeon's a uh, good Yeah. Greasy pigeon is pretty funny. Um, what else was Those it? Those are fighting uh, words. If someone calls me a pigeon, it's a fist fight for sure. Oh, oh God. Actually, I can't read this one. I'll read this one to you off the air. I can't read this one on the <laughs> podcast. This is my personal favorite, and it's our boy Justice Smoke, and he wrote how Amesy stares at a bottle of Aunt Jemima, yeah, and I think personally true. that that might be it because we know oh, how much 
listen, a lot of maple, maple syrup, syrup comments. A lot yeah, of maple I, syrup comments. A lot of fake maple syrup comments. Let's talk <laughs> about the real stuff. I've been drinking it in between periods. Really? Yeah, man. I got a little maple syrup flask, a little sugar buzz. I got another one who's my personal favorite too. It says it's sauce, not gravy. We know it's sauce, not gravy. Shout out to Skinny and Snuff. Yeah. And um, someone wrote, this is how Ames stares uh, when he tells someone how he eats a pizza from the side. The sideways because we know pizza. you like to we know you like to eat pizza sideways, which is nice. That's, that's a gotta standard be a, way. Yeah. yeah. You can look at the the number one pizza review guy, Portnoy. I watch him eat a piece of pizza. <laughs> Tell him he's doing it wrong, everybody that doesn't know how to eat pizza. You gotta try the 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 corner, the the crust. You have how could you possibly review a piece of pizza without taking a bite out of the crust? Listen, I think Good I question. think when one day one day when we reach like episode fifty or something, we're gonna review the footage of you eating the pizza because yeah. I I don't I love you to. know I love you you're my you guys brother, thought but I, I went middle side first you went, which would have been I, I, super weird I, I that would have been weird middle. no no I went I went I went front front first front first and then I went back corner crust which left a little weird dip out of the side of the pizza in the middle. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to make it all even, and I'm going to bite out the middle now. That's what happened. You guys can watch the footage. All right, all right, all right. So, so <laughs> we're gonna we'll, we'll choose a we'll choose a winner off air. But those are our finalists, and uh, we're gonna right. send them some the new Diamond Hands merch. And uh, listen, um, this you know we're, this 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 episode's coming out this Sunday, but this Saturday coming up. We got our buddy Brad Wingfield being inducted into the Danbury Hockey uh, nice. Ring of Honor, which is going to be big. Um, awesome. I, be- I believe we're actually going to mic him up for that night and get some footage of him with the fans and and being honored and stuff, which will be a lot of fun. Um, and listen, anything else you want to uh, – any anyone else you want to shout out? Oh, I do have to shout out. I should have done this in the beginning, but we got a couple sponsors for this show. Um Rich Mar Flores. I don't know if you ever met this guy. This is a good buddy of mine. Um, this is one of the best florists. Okay, so th- let's let's flash back a few weeks ago, Valentine's Day, right? And per usual, because Kim's birthday, my wife is the week before, February seventh. So I'm always mm, thinking of her a big birthday. Time of year for you. Birthday, 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 and I forget a week later, I got Valentine's Day, right? Mm. And I don't care what the women tell you; they mm. want the flowers, and I gotta go through this whole thing. And um, I, I, I was like, oh, my God, you know, it, it's hard to get flowers last minute for Valentine's Day. And my buddy John Morrissey over at Richmore, Richmar Flores, okay, family-owned spot in, in um, Allentown, PA, he hooked me up. Thank God he saved my ass, okay? Nice. That very next day. So, listen, guys, you got a special moment for your woman, your mother. We got Mother's Day coming up. We're going to put a link. You got to hit up Richmar, my boy John. He saved my tail for Valentine's Day. Because I can't keep up anymore. I got 27 anniversaries with my wife, uh, you know, wedding day. This I'm losing track. I'm getting old, on. bro. I'm going to be. I know. I, so, I remember. And a big shout out, and it's perfect you're wearing their hat. Our boy, as Club always, 93. Ken over at Club 93. Um, and listen, I, listen, you know they, they always support us. And, and what they've been doing, you know, and I know you've been away for a month and change, but they're doing so much stuff and, um, you know, there's a big – in Danbury, you know our buddy Matt Caputo. He's running a, a top hat cup, which is going to be like kind of like um, an adult league tournament. And Club 93 is, you know, sponsoring. And they're doing so much for the community, man. And, and they're always asking about you. They miss you. And, um, you know, they're just always, always supporting us. So a big shout-out to Club 93 and all they're doing, trying to get people to keep playing hockey till they're 93 years old. And um, – yeah, man. Anyone else? I don't you know if I'm going to make it, AJ. I don't know if I'm going to make it to, to playing hockey till 93. That's wild. But <laughs> I support it. I support Club 93, and I, I wore my hat today for them. I actually yeah. got my I actually got a bunch of blood work done today from uh, these guys called Get Blokes. It's like a men's health uh, group or whatever. And, um, yeah, they sent me – they do, like, full blood panels for guys. And, 
and they check your hormones. They check everything. I think a lot of people's hormones are in a whack these days from all the the plastic and the phthalates that we ingest in our diet. So um, yeah. blokes, it's like a men's health. Uh, you can find them on Instagram at get blokes, but they're pretty cool. They hooked me up with uh, some blood work. So I'm looking forward to getting my results and getting dialed in. However I can get dialed in. What would you do if the results came back that you've been ingesting a lot of fake maple syrup? Is that something you'd be willing to share with the fans or is that something well, you'd keep to yourself? It would, I don't know. I, I don't think that would ever happen. Cause I'm very, very careful <laughs> about my maple syrup ingestion. If I go to IHOP, I got to bring my own syrup. <laughs> hey, also, big shout out. Um, I'm wearing this short. Royal, royalty Threads, at Royalty Threads Clothing on Instagram. They sent me something for you I got to send out. Nice. Uh, new clothing line, my buddy over here. Um, go definitely check them out. And uh, listen, uh, today, uh, you know, we're recording this a few days in advance, but today is... You, you know my niece Coco, you know, the yeah. swear jar and everything. Mm -hmm. It's her birthday today. So happy birthday nice. to my niece happy Coco. Birthday, Coco. I love you so much. And um, listen, I, I I don't know. I didn't know if I was going to say this or not. But as you know, and I'm going to keep it somewhat kind of private. But, you know, I've been going through a lot. My mom's been having some medical issues the past month. Um, don't really want to put too much out there. It's been a bit of a grind. You know what's going on. And yeah. uh, I just really want to say, man, I think we really it's it's. It's kind of gross how much we underappreciate like the nurses out there and the doctors yeah. out there. You know what I mean? I mean, we, we look, we're we basically talk sports. We talk a lot of stuff. And um, I don't know, man, the past the past few weeks, you know, visiting my mom in a hospital and uh, it just really kind of made me really see like how much these nurses do, man. It's it's unreal. Yeah. You know, what I mean, like yeah. I. I, I've had surgeries, um, I've dealt with some medical, you know, where I've had to be in a hospital for a day or so or whatever, but, you know, my mom's going on, you know, my mom's battling right now, um, you know, I love her, I know she loves listening to us, and I just really wanted to shout out all the nurses at New York Presbyterian Cornell in Manhattan, they've been taking care of my mom so much, and uh, man, you just yeah. really, you underappreciate, you know, these people, meanwhile, yeah, we're absolutely. watching guy. Meanwhile, we're watching athletes crying, making a hundred million dollars. They're crying over their coach getting fired, and yet these nurses, the things that they do on a regular, okay, every day, and it's it's so big. Shout out to all the nurses out there. I really truly yeah. like the past the past six weeks has really put a lot to perspective. So I love you, mom. Yeah. I know everything's gonna work out, and uh, yes, of course. Yeah, I wasn't sending sure if some, I was gonna sending some sending some strength and some love to your mom and to you and your family and. You know, no. requesting that all the people listening do the same thing because uh, it's not no, easy. That... But the nurses, like, you know, I spent some time in the hospital recently with one of my sons. And it yeah. is, you know, you do, like you said, you underappreciate it. And they're there for so much more than they're there, like, to help you emotionally. Like, they'll talk you through things. And, and it's really, uh, it's amazing what they do. So. No, it's 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 just something I felt I had to say. And, I, and that's right. Yeah. You've been through it. And, um, you know, it's just... Shout out to all the nurses and the healthcare workers out there, man. We we definitely take you for granted. And uh, yeah. I feel like every time one of these athletes, like, shed a tear on camera over, like, something, they should donate a million dollars to these, like, oh, nurses. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? Least. Yeah, no kidding. I don't think that's going to happen. Sure. But listen, <laughs> no. listen, guys, we, 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 we love and appreciate all you guys. I mean, listen, our pod is still new. I mean, this is only episode 13. Obviously, this is a new format. Uh, we appreciate you guys. So many people were hitting me up like, hey, when you guys coming back? When you guys coming back? Um, it's so great seeing you here, here on the big screen, Amesy. And yeah, uh, it's fun for us too. Like this is a good way, good good for me and you to reconnect. Like we still talk throughout the week and you know, texting and, and FaceTime with the families and stuff, but this is fun, man. I, we I've always liked it even when we were in the studio together, but it's still fun doing it this way and and uh, th honestly, we talked about it before. This is going to be great because we're going to learn how to do this. And then we're going to be have be way more versatile in getting guests. Um, yeah. You know, I could have a guest here with me FaceTiming you. You could have a guest there with you FaceTiming me. Like we could do it uh, so many different ways now. And we're learning and growing. And that's what this is about in this life that we live. And, you know, we're all going to grow together. No, and you're right, man. And we'll keep working on it. Keep getting better for you guys. And again, I know we said at the top of the show, but a huge thank you to Sweetwater out there in Indiana. Listen, Sweetwater I didn't is how crazy. Do you, do you dude, know what that place is like inside? I no, went to go again, pick I, all this stuff up. It was <laughs> insane, dude. 
No, dude, you're so right because again, I'm not from Indiana. I I don't know yeah. who I don't know what the hell sweet water is. I thought it was a oh, vitamin man. water. And then yeah. a, a big shout out, big shout out to A Rod, Alex Rodriguez, not the baseball player, but the real Alex Rodriguez over there in Fort Wayne, my sales rep, our sales rep, nice. who hooked yeah. it up. He he told us exactly what we needed. And um, listen, again, I was shout in that place to- for a little longer than I was supposed to be because I was just cruising around, checking out the guitars and the drum sets. It is definitely the biggest music store I've ever been into. And uh, well, I'm not well, sure I if you just- know this or not, but I can shred the gnar a little bit on the guitar. Not actually that good. Oh, man. I we got to see that. On a guitar. I got a guitar. But uh, it was crazy. That place is huge, huge. Like I, I, in Fort Wayne, that is not what I expected. I'd expect a gun store that size in Fort Wayne. <laughs> but I didn't expect a music store like that. That's crazy. No, li- cool. listen, I'm t- I'm telling you, when I looked into Sweetwater, right, like you said, I mean, the website is big. You could kind of tell by someone's website. And again, I needed some stuff personally. I said, screw it. I'll just buy it from them. I got it in a day to Danbury. Yeah. So if you need anything, podcast stuff, musical instrument, all that stuff. I mean, I'm not yeah. a musical guy, but you got to hit up Sweetwater. They really hooked it up. And again, you know. We always talk about the fourth line boys, right? Our guy, Justin Castleman, Shane A over there in Fort oh, Wayne, really are. hooking Talk it up much. over there. I mean, yeah. they, they really, I mean, I, I just know good they guys. Set me up here. It's ideal. I know. It look, it's, it's, it's awesome, man. And a big yeah. shout out to our crew over here, Shane, Ian, the whole squad, um, really putting this together and, and keeping us going. So, uh, hey, listen, that, that's that's episode 13. I'm looking forward to, to the next one, brother. And, yes. um, Keep up the great work out there, man. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can, uh, yeah, we're going to keep moving forward. And you got to get you out here soon. Let's figure it. Let's look at some. Yes, yes, absolutely. Here. So, okay. so guys, again, like, subscribe, hit those notifications. Um, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>